We have seen examples now of subclasses that were either disjoint or overlapping from a single superclass. But now it's time to turn our attention to categories or union types. This is when an entity type has more than one superclass. So let's get into it. Before we discuss the union type, let's talk about a concept we may have seen before called a shared subclass. A shared subclass is a subclass that is in more than one superclass subclass relationship. Let's take a look at Engineering Manager. The Engineering Manager has three distinct subclassing relationships. The Engineering Manager is a subclass of a salaried employee. That's how the manager is paid. The Engineering Manager is a subclass of manager. That's its role. And then the Engineering Manager is a subclass of engineer, and that's its job type. Notice that each one of these pitchfork relationships is for a single superclass. And we talk about this as having multiple inheritance. What that means is that the engineering manager must have all the fields of an engineer. It must have all the fields of a manager. It must have all the fields of a salaried employee. And the engineering manager must exist as a record in all three of its superclasses. This is why we say for shared subclasses that a shared subclass is a subset of the intersection of its superclasses. So if we have Hank, who is a salaried employee, and he's also a manager, and he's also an engineer, then Hank can be found in this superclass overlap right there in the center. So in this case, Hank, the engineering manager, has to be present in all three of those superclasses. This is what it means to be a shared subclass. And notice that I'm using the expression Boolean and to describe it because you must be an engineer and a manager and a salaried employee. And how do we interpret those pitchforks coming from engineering manager? We say that an engineering manager is an engineer, an engineering manager is a manager, and an engineering manager is a salaried employee. The engineering manager at one time is in fact all three. In this example, we're going to explore this relationship here between owners and registered vehicles. And so we have an owner who owns registered vehicles and we have these different attributes. But owner is a subclass. We can see that with the pitchfork, but it's a subclass of a U. And the U stands for union. And that means that it will have multiple superclasses. So in this case, the owner of a vehicle could be a person, or it could be a bank, or it could be a company. Like our previous example, owner, the subclass, has three superclasses, person, bank, and company. Previously, we saw an engineering manager had three superclasses as well, the engineer, the manager, and the salaried employee. But there's a big difference. The engineering manager was at the same time a member of all three superclasses. But not so the owner. The owner is a subclass of the union of those entity types. What that means is you take all the persons in your database, you take all the banks in your database, you take all the companies in your database, and the owner of the registered vehicle has to be one of those. So it will not be simultaneously all of those. It will be, in fact, one of those. So the pitchfork to the U is an ISA. An owner is a union of the three superclasses. 
But at the moment we compare owner to any one of those superclasses, we need to change the relationship to could be. So the owner of registered vehicle 27 could be a person, or it could be a bank, or it could be a company. But we know that the owner is a member of the union of all three of those sets. Similarly, a registered vehicle is a subclass of the union of two superclasses, car or truck. This does not mean that a registered vehicle is a car and is a truck. It is a member of the union of those. So a registered vehicle is either a car or a truck. What you could say here is a registered vehicle could be a car or it could be a truck. This is why we say that for the union types, we're dealing with Boolean ors when we talk about the super types. Sometimes it's actually hard to determine if something is a subclass or a superclass. So if we look at our registered vehicles, we can see here that a registered vehicle could be a car and it could be a truck. The pitchfork is pointing down to the two subclasses and the pitchfork is still read is a. But you could also say, well, we used disjoints before, you know, a car uh, is a registered vehicle and a truck is a registered vehicle. So maybe, maybe it goes this way. So the question is, what are the superclasses? Are the, is the superclass car and truck as the union representation would have you believe? Or are the superclasses the registered vehicle as this disjoint would have you believe? So I think you have to ask yourself the question about really true subclassing. If I were to say a registered vehicle is a subclass of the union of a car and a truck, either a car or a truck, that makes sense. Um, I can say a registered vehicle is a, or is either a car or a truck. But this way, if I said a car is a registered vehicle, that's a false statement because if a car is not registered, then a car is not a registered vehicle. So we instantly begin to see that this subclassing is not correct. Similarly, a truck, a truck might be a registered vehicle, but this pitchfork is is a, and a truck is not necessarily a registered vehicle. Not all trucks are registered vehicles, but all registered vehicles are either cars or trucks. So the union representation is correct and the disjoint representation is false. And so the superclass remains the car class and the truck class. Again, the same thing applies when we look at the owners. You might be tempted to say, well, a bank is an owner, a company is an owner, and a person is an owner. And so therefore, these, these relationships are correct. And owner is the superclass. But until you realize that it's not really a person is an owner. Just because you're a person doesn't mean you own anything. And just because you're a bank doesn't mean you own a vehicle. So these relationships are not is us. All of these pitchforks really would be could be a. A bank could be an owner. A company could be an owner. A person could be an owner. So none of these are true subclassing. So it is not a disjoint model. But it is fair to say that an owner is a member of the union of persons, banks, and companies. If I applied that pitchfork directly to the superclasses, the three superclasses, I would say an owner could be a person, an owner could be a bank, an owner could be a company. But absolutely, an owner is a member of the union of those three superclasses. So in this case, the union representation is correct. 
So the question is, how would you model this in the physically in a database? Well, you would absolutely make a table for the superclasses. You'd have a table for car, and you'd have a table for truck. You don't want a table per the class hierarchy. It's really going to smush too much together. Cars and trucks are distinct things. So each of these two superclasses deserves its own table. And then similarly registered vehicle would also be its own table. So this is sort of the way you would do the joined subclass modeling of a disjoint relationship. You would have three tables, a car table, a truck table, and a vehicle table. And in order to link them together, uh, the, the registered vehicle table is going to have a vehicle ID. So you would put a vehicle ID here. And then you would repeat that vehicle ID in the car and in the owner. So that way the superclasses were linked to the subclass. Similarly, up top, you would have a table for each of the superclasses. You'd have a person table, you would have a bank table, and you would have a company table. It does you no good to smush those into one single superclass. So every superclass gets its own table. And then the subclass of owner gets its own table. And then up here, in a very similar fashion, you would need an owner ID. And then the owner ID could then be repeated up here. So each of the superclasses would be connected to the subclass. Now, what's going to seem a little strange to you guys is that when I model the owner entity type in the database, it may only have one field, the owner ID. The registered vehicle at least has two fields. It would have the vehicle ID and the license plate number. But it might seem strange to you to have a table like owner that only has one field. That's because the owner table, the subclass table, is the table that's in a relationship with registered vehicles. And in order to preserve that, we need to have a table just for owner, even if all it has is the owner ID. And so this is how you model union data types. You don't come across these as often as you do the other forms of EE or diagramming, but it's important to know the difference and it's important to know how to interpret an EE or diagram with a union.